If you're planning to learn skiing, you're in for a magical time. Skiing quickly becomes an addiction once you start to get the hang of it. But taking that first step, I know it can be a little overwhelming. I'm sure you have a lot of questions like should I learn from a private instructor or a government institute? Where do I go? How many days will it take? How much will it cost? Don't worry, I'll be giving you all the information you need to kickstart your skiing journey. In this video, I'll be discussing all of these topics and I've also divided this video into sections. So if you have a few specific questions, you can skip directly to that part of the video. All right then, let's jump right into it. Now there are various ways of learning skiing. The most common one is that you hire a private instructor that gives you personal training on a per day basis. Your second option is to do a basic skiing course from a government recognized institute. There are structured courses with a fixed syllabus and it is subsidized by the government. There's also an exam at the end of it and you get a certificate along with a grade. There's also a hybrid option of doing short skiing courses from a private institute or a private skiing school. These courses are certified as well and they do have a fixed syllabus, but it is more in the form of a skiing package that includes training, equipment, food and accommodation and you can customize these packages as per your own needs. What I did was I did my basic skiing course from Abhimas and I had never tried skiing before that and the year after that I did my intermediate course from IISM. And after that I also skied with a private instructor for a few days. So based on my personal experience, I'm going to tell you the advantages and disadvantages of each of these options and then you can decide which one works the best for you. Your cheapest, most budget-friendly option is to do a skiing course from a government institute. These courses are heavily subsidized. It costs just about 10k for the whole course including 14 days of food, accommodation, training and equipment and that is a steal deal if you think about it. It's less than half of what you would be paying otherwise. Hiring a private instructor on the other hand costs approximately 2500 per day and an additional 600 per day for renting skiing equipment. After adding food and accommodation costs to this, this option becomes pretty expensive. But you can bring down this cost to some extent if you share the instructor among 2 to 3 people and split the instructor fees as well as the accommodation costs. Private courses start from about 25k and from there on it increases depending on your choice of the hotel. So obviously there is a huge difference in the cost when you ski privately versus when you go to a government institute. A skiing course with a government institute is 14 days long. If you don't have that many days, maybe because of work or exams, then hiring a private instructor makes more sense for you. Since they charge on a per day basis, you can hire an instructor for one day also, but I would suggest that you give it at least 4 days. because it takes 2 to 3 days just to learn the basics and the real fun actually begins after that when you're learning with a private instructor all the focus is on you so you end up learning a lot faster even though you're spending more money in a way it's worth it because the same techniques that you would take 14 days to learn in a skiing course you learn within 4 to 5 days with a private instructor in a skiing course although you do get to ski for more number of days in lesser amount of money and you get a lot more practice but here one instructor teaches 8 to 10 people at the same time so you get less personal attention although they teach you very well and you get to learn a lot but obviously it's not as fast as what you would learn when you take one on one training Also with a private instructor you can learn at your own pace. If you are slow they will wait till you get it right. And if you are a very quick learner then they'll quickly move on to more advanced techniques. In a basic course no matter how good you are they will not teach you advanced techniques because they need to stick to a fixed syllabus. Also getting a seat in these government courses is difficult because they get full very very quickly. If you want to do this course you have to plan and book at least 3 to 4 months in advance. And the application process is also a little complicated. For some institutes you need to courier a demand draft and an application form and you cannot pick your own dates. The dates of the batches are pre-decided by the institutes. But in case of private options you can plan and book last minute, you can pick the dates of your choice and the booking process is hassle-free with convenient payment methods. Private as well as government institutes offer higher level skiing courses that allow you to pursue skiing further. After you complete your course, both private and government institutes will give you certificates that will make you eligible for the next level of the skiing course. But government recognized institutes only accept trainees with a certificate from another government recognized institute. They do not accept trainees holding a certificate from a private institute. Other than eligibility for higher level courses, certificates are not of prime importance when it comes to skiing. For example, in mountaineering, to go for expeditions it is compulsory to have an AMC certificate. But in skiing, when you go to any higher slope to ski, nobody's going to ask you if you have a certificate or not. It's only required for participating in competitions and tournaments. So especially in case of skiing, don't think too much about certification. When you're learning privately, especially in Gulmarg, there are ski lifts installed that carry you up the slope every time you ski down. And this gets very convenient. 
but in a basic course by government institutes you will not get to use ski lifts so you need to climb up the slope yourself while carrying your heavy skis on your shoulders and you need to do this again and again every time you ski down believe me this can get very tiring it actually makes a very big difference and it's only something you'll realize when you go there if you see yourself skiing in the long run and you are confident that you will enjoy the sport then you can go all in and do a 14 day long skiing course But if you're not sure whether you'll enjoy it or not and you just want to try it out first, then making such a long commitment and doing a skiing course is probably not such a good idea for you. Because skiing continuously for so many days at a stretch can get hectic and physically exhausting for some people. In a skiing institute, there are a lot of rules and restrictions. Drinking and smoking is not allowed and you need to maintain a certain amount of discipline. So if you have more of a vacation mindset and you just want to chill, then consider skiing privately. Here you have all the freedom and you can ski as per your own comfort. But even after everything I've mentioned so far, I will always have a soft corner for doing a government certified skiing course. In spite of all the restrictions, it is still the most fun option out of the 3. It'll remind you of your school or hostel days. Since there are about 60 people in the batch, you make so many wonderful new friends from all over the country that are all into adventure sports and traveling. And since you're sharing the same journey with them for 14 days, you actually end up forming a really good bond. There's also a spirit of healthy competition and since everyone's there to ski, there's a lot of skiing related discussion. So you feel closer to the sport and you feel more encouraged to pursue it. So there you have it. Each of these options have their own pros and cons. If you ask me, I'm going to do my advance course for sure and I'm also going to continue seeing with a private instructor in the future. But you must go for the option that suits you the most, keeping in mind your budget, the number of days you have in hand, and your willingness to commit to the sport for a long time. If you have decided to do your basic skiing course from a government recognized institute, then I'll be making a video in which I'll be giving you information specifically about that. I'll be discussing in detail as to the various institutes you can go to, how to apply and a lot more. And I'll leave a link for you in the description as soon as it's uploaded. But if you have decided to ski privately, be it with a private instructor or a private institute, then continue watching this video and I'll be giving you a lot more information about that. The skiing season typically starts late December and goes on till March. I know that the last week of December is probably a very convenient time for everyone because of Christmas and New Year holidays, but you must try to avoid it. Firstly, because by this time, usually there hasn't been enough snowfall to form a good layer of snow on the slopes. Also, it's very crowded. There are too many people on the slopes and everything costs a lot more than usual, be it instructor fees, equipment, hotels or flights. March on the other hand is when the temperatures start to rise again and the snow tends to get slushy especially during the day. Jan and Feb are the peak winter months. By this time there's a nice thick layer of snow with plenty of snowfall. And if you want an even more specific suggestion, try going between 15th Jan and 15th Feb. That is when the snow conditions are considered to be at their very best. The most popular skiing destinations in India are Gulmarg, Ali and Manali. Gulmarg however is considered better because of better skiing infrastructure, more facilities and a wider variety of slopes as compared to Ali and Manali. Here you'll meet skiers from all over the country and even the world. Right from beginner skiers to national level skiers, it is the hub for skiing in India. There's a gondola and there are ski lifts installed on all the slopes to take skiers up the slope after every run. There are so many different types of slopes with different difficulty levels. There's something for each level of skier. And there are plenty of skiing equipment rental shops, both private and government. When it comes to Gulmarg, you can be a little more sure about the snow. More or less it receives a decent amount of snow every winter, but Manali and Ali may receive less snow during some seasons. Like I told you earlier, the cost of skiing in Gulmarg depends on whether you go for a private instructor or a private institute. Whether you hire a personal instructor or you do a private course, try not to share the instructor between more than 3 to 4 people to reduce the cost further. Because the entire point of learning privately is to get that personal attention so that you learn faster. If you're taking a skiing package, make sure you confirm the instructor student ratio beforehand and you understand all the cost inclusions and exclusions properly before you book. Most of the private companies offer free pick up and drop service and they include the ski lift charges within the package cost. 
And if you want to learn for longer, but you're on a tight budget, then I have another hack for you. What you can do is, once you have learned the basics, which will take you about four to five days, then you can start skiing on your own on the easier slopes for a few days. Practice what you have learned so far. After that, hire an instructor again for a day or two. Learn some new techniques, get some new tips, and then again practice on your own for a few days. This way, you'll be able to keep learning and practicing while saving money at the same time. When it comes to accommodation, Gulmarg is surprisingly expensive. If you want a cheaper, more affordable option, then rather than staying in hotels, consider staying in huts. Winter is a busy season in Gulmarg and everything gets booked very much in advance. So make sure you book early by October, November, especially if you're on a budget. You'll find huts ranging from 1500 going up to about 3000 and if you want the cheaper huts, try going through someone, probably your skiing instructor or if you know someone there. If you're a solo traveler, try to find someone who you can share the room with so that you can bring down the cost. When it comes to hotels, obviously the range is very wide because you'll get hotels starting from 3k going all the way up to 30k. Also, whichever accommodation you book, make sure it's near the Gulmar Gandola because this is the location you will have to walk to every morning while wearing your heavy ski boots and carrying your heavy skis on your shoulders. And believe me, this can get very tiring. Before you book, just map the distance of your hotel or hut to this location and make sure that it's walkable. If you're going for a package deal with a private institute, then make sure that they give you accommodation close by to this area. And if the accommodation is far off, then they should be providing you a pickup and drop facility as a part of the package. Also, I just wanted to alert you that in Gulmar, there's a lot of overcharging by taxis and guides. People are constantly asking for tips for everything, so just be careful about that. Since skiing is something you do in the snow, it's obviously going to be cold no matter where you choose to ski. But if you're worried about how you're going to manage in the cold, then don't worry, it's not unbearable. So in case you guys are wondering that the temperature is like minus four, minus three in the day. So it's so cold, like how do we manage? So the thing is that when you go skiing, because you're physically so active, you're going to be climbing the slope again and again. Your body like generates a lot of heat. So you don't feel that cold while skiing. And in the evenings, most of the hotels in these areas are heated and they provide electric blankets. You can still double check while booking if you want. So in this way, your evenings and nights are taken care of. Now, in addition to all of these arrangements, you must carry the right clothes to keep yourself warm and dry. Now, the secret to staying warm is layering up. Instead of wearing just one thick jacket, wear multiple layers. Layers provide insulation and this technique works like magic to keep you warm. So starting with what you'll be wearing while skiing, because you'll be exerting yourself so much, so in spite of the cold, you'll be sweating a lot. So for your base layer, you need something that is breathable and dries quickly. The skiing base layers available at Decathlon are great for this, but if not, then you can even wear dry fit sports t-shirts that are full sleeves. For your middle layer, you have multiple options. Be careful not to overdo your middle layer because while skiing, you tend to feel hot and stuffy. In fact, some people feel so hot while skiing that sometimes they skip the middle layer altogether. You can choose whether you want to wear a heavy or light middle layer. Depending on the weather on that particular day, your personal tendency to feel cold and the thickness of your outer layer. You'll be falling down in the snow a lot as a beginner. So your outer layer needs to be waterproof so that you remain dry. A skiing jacket or snow jacket would be ideal and since these are pretty warm, with this you can keep your middle layer light. But if you don't want to buy a jacket specially, then you can wear any other waterproof layer. Even if it's just a thin outer shell, it's okay. And you can wear that with a heavier middle layer to keep yourself warm. If you already have a down jacket and you're considering wearing that, then although it will work, but you should know that they are water repellent and not waterproof. So on a clear day and in light snowfall, you'll be fine, but it'll start to get wet on days with heavy snowfall. For your lower body, you get trousers that are specially designed for skiing. These are skiing trousers, they're from Decathlon. And the best part is, these skiing trousers are broad at the bottom and they have this inner covering that goes right over your ski boots and prevents the snow from getting in. If you don't want to get special skiing trousers, then you can wear any other water repellent trousers that you may have, like a quick dry trekking trouser. Since your lower body does not feel that cold as compared to your upper body, so if you want, you can skip the base layer, especially in case of skiing trousers because they are warm enough already. But with other regular trousers, they might not be that warm, so you might need to wear a base layer under it. So I'll tell you what I wear when I go skiing. So there are the ski trousers and there's no thermals, nothing inside that. This is a ski base layer. So it has like a little bit of fleece inside it. This is again from Decathlon. And on top of that, I just wear a 
ski jacket okay which is again very warm and waterproof this is all i wear while skiing because i tend to feel very hot while skiing but if you feel that you want something a little warmer so maybe you can add a layer or two maybe you can wear something under the trousers and you can probably wear something on top of this as you ski for one or two days you will realize what combination of layers is working the best for you because it's different for different people although these options are ideal and more suitable for skiing it may feel like too much to buy in one go especially if you're not sure whether you'll use it in the future or not so even if you stick to the cheaper alternatives you'll be just fine and most of these things you might have at home already but if you do end up buying new clothes for skiing or your winter trip in general don't shy away from buying bright colors go for those bright yellows greens and reds these colors really stand out in the white snow and your pictures will turn out amazing for the time that you are not skiing you can again follow the layering technique and add or remove layers based on your personal preference Moving on to socks, a really small item that can make or break your skiing trip. As a beginner, it may sound like a good idea to wear those typical thick socks or to wear two pairs of socks thinking it'll keep your feet warm and dry. But no matter how cold it is outside, your feet will sweat a lot while skiing, and doing this will only make your feet sweat more, making it prone to blisters. And trust me, even one blister can be really painful while skiing and it can ruin your fun on the slopes. You need socks that are thin and breathable. Ideally, go for socks that are made of synthetic materials or merino wool. The skiing socks in Decathlon are of this material. You can even wear synthetic hiking socks. You could wear your regular cotton socks if you want. They are not that breathable, but it's still a better option than wearing those extra thick socks. Whichever socks you go for, make sure they are long enough to cover your entire shin. Basically, they should come slightly above your skiing boots because when you are skiing, there's constant pressure on your shin. Wearing full socks will protect your shin from the inside of the skiing boots. Also, socks tend to stink after a long day of skiing, and wearing the same sweaty and dirty socks repeatedly can again increase the chances of blisters. While washing them is always an option, try carrying as many extra pairs as you can. You're also going to need a pair of good quality waterproof gloves. That's an absolute must. Carry a normal as well as a woolen cap to wear while skiing depending on the weather that day. If you want, you can keep a small 10 liter backpack with you while skiing. In this you can keep some dry snacks, your camera, a water bottle and stuff. And here's a bonus tip for you. For your main luggage, don't carry a suitcase because it's inconvenient to drag it in the snow. Carry a backpack instead. Carry water in an insulated bottle because in a normal bottle your water will get ice cold in no time and you will not feel like drinking more than a sip or two. While skiing you'll be wearing skiing boots that you'll be renting as a part of your skiing equipment. But for the rest of the time to get around the place if you're planning to wear normal sneakers you will slip a lot while walking in the snow and they will also get wet easily. Since you'll be spending a lot of time playing in snow, I would suggest wet trekking shoes. They are water repellent and they have a high ankle, so snow doesn't get in easily and they will also give you a good grip while walking in the snow. A lot of people think that you don't need sunscreen because you're going to a cold place, but you'll be surprised at how much sun exposure you get in the mountains. Even after applying sunscreen, you're going to get crazy tanned either way. But still, you must carry a good sunscreen with a high SPF to protect yourself from the harmful UV rays which are much stronger at the higher altitudes. And especially since you'll be skiing all day, you'll be exposed to the sun for a very long duration. So you must apply it twice before the morning as well as the afternoon skiing session. This time when I was in Gulmarg, I saw a lot of skiers and instructors applying this one particular sunscreen. And apparently they say that it's the only one that works. So if you want, you can try it out. You'll probably find it online. And don't forget to carry lip balm. Your lips tend to get pretty dry in the cold. Sunglasses. Another really important item that you absolutely cannot skip. Because the snow reflects a lot of light and it gets too bright to see. Go for curved shaped ones, something with full coverage to protect your eyes and make sure they are UV protected as well as polarized. All these features will be mentioned on the information label. You don't really need to buy those proper skiing goggles especially as a beginner. They are pretty expensive and their use is limited only to skiing. So you'll be just fine with a good pair of sunglasses. If you have prescription glasses, then your best solution is to wear contact lenses and wear normal sunglasses over them. If you find lenses uncomfortable, then you can get prescription sunglasses made specially, but I think it'll be hard to find full coverage UV protected sunglasses that can also be customized and they'll probably be expensive as well. And if you're thinking of wearing just your normal glasses while skiing, then let me tell you that's a bad idea because it's genuinely too bright to see on the slopes. So you're gonna need sunglasses. 
Now, obviously, most of these items can be easily found at Decathlon. But in case you forget something or if you just want some change, then you get really amazing stuff in these local markets. That is the Tangmarg and Gulmarg market and the Manali main market. You get a lot of variety, especially when it comes to skiing trousers, gloves, goggles, and stuff, and that too at a cheaper rate. You also have the option of renting some of these items, like snow boots, skiing clothing items, etc. But if you're going to be there for more days, then it probably makes more sense to buy it once and for all, and then you can keep using them for your future trips as well. Skiing all day can be physically demanding. And if your body is not physically active, initially you'll get a lot of body pains, sore muscles, and you will feel tired very easily. Because while skiing, a lot of the pressure is on your thighs, glutes, and calves. So if you work on your fitness and strength, especially on your leg strength, you'll actually end up learning skiing a lot faster, and you'll be much better at it. Here are some exercises that you can start doing beforehand that will genuinely help you with skiing, and you'll be surprised at the difference it makes. Also, if you know how to skate, that helps with skiing too because it gets easier to balance. I'm going to leave you with one last tip. When you just start learning skiing, you'll probably fall a lot, and it may take some time to get the hang of it. But don't lose hope. Get up and try again and again. You will figure it out eventually. And once you do, you'll just get addicted to skiing. That's all from my side. Stay hydrated. Stay warm. Don't forget to apply that sunscreen and have a wonderful skiing season. If this information has helped you, give me a thumbs up. And for more adventure and travel-related content, consider subscribing to my channel. And I'll see you soon.